One week in Europe might not seem like a lot, but trust me with the right planning, it's more than enough to be able to enjoy a really amazing European vacation that you'll look back on fondly for years to come. And to show you how this video is going to be highlighting over 40 different itinerary options for one week in Europe, all of which I've personally done at some point, and they're also broken down into whether you're going to one country, two countries, or three. Of course, you can adjust and tweak these itineraries if you want. They're very ambitious itineraries, so if you're more of a slow traveler, you might want to make a few adjustments. But trust me, one week is not really a lot, so you need to be ambitious if you want to make the most of it. Now, let's cut to some cinematic clips so you don't have to look at my face the entire time. If you only have one week in Europe, my honest recommendation is to just pick one country and explore it well over the course of the week. So here's some ideas for amazing one week, one country itineraries in Europe that I can personally vouch for. Belgium is hands down one of the most underrated countries in Europe. Thanks to its compact size, one week is enough time to explore multiple cities and taste test your way through the scenic wonderland of beer, waffles, and chocolate. The Netherlands is an amazing little country with lots to offer beyond its world famous capital of Amsterdam. From fairy tale day trips like Heathorn and Utrecht to the ultra cool offerings of Rotterdam, exploring this country is a great choice if you only have one week in Europe. I am utterly obsessed with Switzerland, and if money is no object, I think it's the perfect country to spend a week when you're in Europe. From elegant cities and jaw dropping nature to some of the most scenic train rides in the world, you definitely won't regret spending a week here. Austria is an absolutely stunning country with tons of options if you're looking to combine nature with culture. The following one week itinerary combines some of Austria's most iconic destinations, including Vienna, Austria's grand capital, Hallstatt, a true fairy tale come to life, and Salzburg, famous for Mozart and the sound of music. While most first timers to Austria will visit the most famous destinations like Vienna and Salzburg, I can highly recommend a visit to Graz and the region of South Styria. This area is known for incredible wine and a laid back Mediterranean sort of vibe, so much that Graz is informally known as the northernmost Mediterranean city. I've been lucky to call Bavaria home for a few years, and let me tell you, this state is truly magical. The following one week itinerary combines culture with nature in the prettiest possible way, with plenty of flexibility and optional day trips that allow you to choose your own adventure. Germany is a huge country with loads to offer, so a week is barely enough to scrape the surface. But if you like city breaks, then I can recommend this one week Germany itinerary, which combines the oh so contrasting cities of Munich and Berlin, along with lovely day trips that showcase some of the country's top attractions. If you're as obsessed with castles as I am, then Germany is definitely the place for you, where you can spend a week in Europe visiting some of the prettiest and most famous castles in the world. The following itinerary is designed with castle stalkers in mind, with plenty of fairy tale magic to carry you through the admittedly fast paced schedule. If you're looking for the storybook version of England with buttery stone cottages, quaint villages, and elegant country manners, then you need to visit the Cotswolds. I love this area because there are so many different ways you can explore it. If you're more of a slow paced traveler, then you could easily enjoy a quiet week based in just one town while doing day trips. If however, you're more of a see it all type of traveler, then it does make sense to move around a bit like in this ambitious but amazing Cotswolds itinerary. Catalonia is one of the few Spanish regions I've had the privilege of exploring in depth, and wow, what a place. While many travelers tend to visit Barcelona as a standalone city break, those with a week in Europe should definitely explore beyond the Catalonian capital, like in this itinerary, which includes stops in Girona, Montserrat, and Tarragona. I will forever consider Bulgaria as one of the most underrated gems in Europe. If you're looking to spend a week in Europe a bit more off the beaten path, then Bulgaria is an excellent choice. The following one-week itinerary blends city bustle in Sofia with historic sites and beautiful nature in Rila, along with Veliko Ternovo, one of my favorite little towns in all of Europe. Croatia is an epic country with a lot of ground to cover, but for many tourists, the idyllic islands and cities of southern Croatia are the ones that call their name. If that's the case, here's an adapted version of the itinerary I did while sailing with med sailors. It combines historic cities like Dubrovnik and Split with beautiful islands like Korčula and of course a pinch of party perfection in Hvar.
Spending only one week in Ireland is tough because this country, while small, is packed end to end with incredible sites that you'll want to add to your itinerary. That's why I've presented two Irish options. The first one, which is more city break oriented and doable by train. And a second one that's more fast paced and suitable for a road trip where you want to see it all. So you want to road trip Ireland and take in more natural landscapes and cities? Here's a one week itinerary that's a lot more fast paced than the one we just discussed, but will ensure you get your fill of Ireland's most iconic sites. Of all the trips I've ever done, road tripping around Iceland's Ring Road is among the most memorable. If you're looking for a nature-packed week in Europe, then Iceland is a wonderful option that will absolutely take your breath away. This itinerary crams many of Iceland's most famous sites into a week, and yes, it's fast-paced, but very, very worth it. Alsace is a French region that is, in my opinion, one of the prettiest, most fairy tale esque places in the world. Oozing with charm no matter the season, Alsace is an ideal place to visit in Europe for a week, whether for Christmas markets or winery hopping in the summer. The following itinerary is packed with locations, but keep in mind the smaller towns included are quite tiny and don't offer many activities besides strolling around, enjoying the atmosphere, and sampling wine until you're dizzy. Note, I have squeezed in an optional day trip to Basel because it's a cool and awesome city so close to Malouz that they share an airport. You might want to skip this though in favor of more time in Malouz depending on how many things you want to do there. While not as popular with overseas visitors as some of its neighbors, Slovenia has a ton to offer from epic castles and pristine lakes to cool historic cities. The following one week itinerary will give you a little taste of all those highlights with just enough awesomeness to leave you plotting your return. Malta is one of those rare destinations that combines sunny beach resorts with jaw-dropping historical sites and quirky attractions, all tied up in one affordable package. I've been there twice now and dream constantly of going back. The following Malta itinerary is definitely more of a culture break than a lays in the sun kind of vacation, but it brings together some Maltese highlights that I'm sure you'll love. Portugal has a little something for everyone, whether you're itching to laze on a beach, cram in some culture, or eat until you food coma. Well, if you're visiting Portugal and want to squeeze in as much culture as possible, here is a city-centric Portugal itinerary that will give you a taste of the country's most famous sites. Here's how to spend a week in Portugal with a focus on culture and history. And if you're looking to enjoy some of Portugal's famous coastline during your week in Europe, here's another itinerary for you. If you want equal doses of culture and beachy downtime while visiting Portugal, then this Portuguese itinerary might be more your speed, combining days in the country's capital along with some lazy days in the famous Algarve region. Here's how to spend a week in Portugal with a mix of culture and beaches. Italy is one of my favorite countries in the world because of its diversity of attractions, and I think Northern Italy's rugged mountains may be one of the best travel surprises I've ever had. For a long time, I only thought of Italy as historic cities and Mediterranean coastline, but as you'll see in this itinerary, Italy is home to some jaw-dropping natural landscapes as well. Here's how to spend a week in Northern Italy exploring the Dolomites. In my university dorm days, I used to sleep with a postcard of Cinque Terre taped above my bed. So it shouldn't surprise you that this is one of my favorite parts of Italy. The following one week itinerary focuses on Liguria with a combination of city and culture in Genoa, and of course, plenty of gorgeous coastline and relaxation in Portofino and the amazing Cinque Terre. If it's Italy's greatest hits you're after, this one week Italy itinerary is for you. With Venice, Florence, and Rome all in the mix, this fast-paced and ambitious schedule combines Italy's most visited destinations. If at all possible, I'd recommend stretching this itinerary over 10 days instead of seven so you can explore each city more thoroughly. But with only a week in Europe, this itinerary is doable as well, even if it's exhausting. For a combination of cosines and culture, here is a one-week Italy itinerary that I can recommend. I did a variation of this during my first backpacking trip in Europe and really enjoyed it. With Rome, Pompeii, and the Amalfi Coast all included, this itinerary combines many of the things that make Italy such a fascinating destination. Here's how to spend a week in Italy with equal parts culture and coast. Southern Spain is magic on earth, truly. 
And while the cities of Andalusia are certainly no secret, there are still many hidden gems to explore in the region, like the Sierra de Aracena, for example, which I've personally been to and loved. If you're looking for an Andalusia highlights tour though, here is a fast-paced itinerary that will allow you to see all the main sites in the area, although you'll definitely be exhausted by the end of it. Most visitors who come to Paris attempt to tackle all of its sites in just a few days, which is a sure recipe for burnout. Trust me, if you have a week to spend in Paris, take it. From the dreamy romance of Montmartre to all the wonderful free things to do in Paris at your disposal, one week is a great amount of time to spend in the Paris region. Of course, if you get bored, you can easily take advantage of one of the many excellent day trips from Paris. Prague is a common stop on most European trips. But if you only have a week to spend in Europe, I highly recommend focusing on Czechia alone and visiting other amazing sites nearby. This Czechia itinerary combines time in Prague with other lovely sites around South Bohemia, which is a region I absolutely adore. Here's how to spend a week in Czechia. If you're obsessed with Harry Potter and only have a week to spend in Europe, this is the itinerary that you need in your life. It combines all the nerdiest Harry Potter must-dos in the UK, from visiting the real studio where all the Harry Potter movies were filmed, to riding the Hogwarts Express in real life. And if you're a Game of Thrones fan with only a week to spend in Europe, then this might be the itinerary that you're looking for. This one-week itinerary packs together all the most important Game of Thrones sites and attractions in Northern Ireland, and is a trip that I can guarantee will make you cry happy nerd tears. To make this Northern Ireland itinerary public transport friendly, or to simply minimize moving around, you can stay in Belfast as a base the entire time and simply do day tours to various Game of Thrones locations. Superfans of the famous Before trilogy will love this special Greece itinerary which brings together all the filming locations seen in Before Midnight. Besides film nerd points though, this itinerary is also a great way to explore the Peloponnese, combining historical ruins with adorable little towns, and of course, the famous sun-drenched coastline. As far as European travel destinations go, I find Lithuania so underrated. I traveled to Vilnius for the first time a few years ago and absolutely fell in love with the hearty food, lovely architecture, and super fun vibe thanks to the city's vibrant cafe and craft brewing culture. If you're looking to spend your week in Europe in a less touristy gem, I can highly recommend Lithuania. For another European destination that's a bit more off the beaten path, I can highly recommend a visit to North Macedonia, by far one of the most surprising places I've encountered in my travels. This North Macedonia itinerary combines a bit of everything, from the unique city atmosphere of Skopje and Bitola, to glorious natural gems like the Matka Canyon and Lake Ored. Now, if you want to expand your horizons beyond just a single country, here are some ideas for one-week Europe itineraries that take you to two countries, meaning, of course, double the culture, food, and fun opportunities. The French Riviera is one of my all-time favorite destinations with gorgeous towns, stunning coastline, and unbeatable weather. The following itinerary will allow you to check both Southern France and Monaco off your bucket list, but trust me, you'll definitely want to come back for more. If it's your first time in Europe and iconic cities are what you're after, there's no better combination than Paris and London, who are conveniently linked by the Eurostar. This itinerary brings you to both world-famous capitals with just enough time to see why they rank among the most popular capitals in the world to visit. Great food, awesome architecture, and a relaxed laid-back lifestyle are just a few reasons to put Scandinavia on your bucket list. If you're hankering for a fun city break, this itinerary combines two of Northern Europe's most dynamic cities for a week-long vacation you definitely won't forget. If elegant architecture and historic cities are more your vibe, this city break combination featuring Dresden and Prague is one I can highly recommend. These two cities are among the most beautiful in Europe and are both filled with fascinating historical sites and museums. Pick this one-week European itinerary and I promise you won't regret it. Munich and Vienna is another excellent city break combination if you're looking for your fill of culture and gorgeous scenery. The following itinerary also includes optional day trips to Neuschwanstein Castle, famous for inspiring Walt Disney, and Salzburg, where much of The Sound of Music was filmed. Wine, nature, and culture come together in this awesome one-week itinerary in Austria and Slovenia. This trip combines the idyllic South Styrian region of Austria with Slovenia's capital of Ljubljana, along with arguably its most famous attraction, Lake Bled. 
If it's a more relaxing one week in Europe you're looking for, this itinerary has a bit of everything and definitely won't disappoint. This may not be the most conventional European city break, but here be out. Skopje and Pristina are two absolutely fascinating places to visit. Skopje, for instance, offers one of the most eclectic mixes of architecture you'll find in any capital, with 300 plus statues in the city center and a fascinating Ottoman old town, while Pristina has a thriving cafe and restaurant culture, along with unique landmarks like a library that ranks among the world's ugliest buildings. The Baltics are another region of Europe that I find woefully underrated, and this itinerary will allow you to see exactly why I feel that way. Riga and Vilnius are two awesome capitals with plenty to explore, from Riga's glorious Art Nouveau scene to Vilnius's many churches and awesome cafe culture. So here's how to spend a week in Riga and Vilnius. Now, unless you have the stamina of an Olympian, I wouldn't advise trying to cram three countries into a single week in Europe, but hey, sometimes a week is all you have to work with and you want to see it all. If that sounds like you, here are some ambitious but doable itineraries that will ensure you get plenty to see in a short time. This trifecta of destinations is a popular route among backpackers and cruisers alike for its convenience and astounding beauty. If you're looking for a combination of historic old towns and scenic nature, this is an amazing way to spend a week in Europe. Here's how to spend a week in Dubrovnik, Mostar and Kotor. The Danube is the second longest river in Europe flowing from the Black Forest to the Black Sea. About halfway though is where you'll find a stretch connecting three of Europe's prettiest capital cities, Vienna, Bratislava, and Budapest. The close distance between these three cities makes it perfect for a week-long trip in Europe. Benelux, despite sounding like an off-brand hand cream, in fact refers to Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg, three small European countries with quick and convenient train connections that make spending a week there super easy and super fun. That's right, you can take a canal cruise in Amsterdam, gorge on waffles in Brussels, and visit fortresses in Luxembourg all in one week. Hoping to check off Swiss chocolate, Bavarian beer, and the world's sixth smallest country in a single trip? Well, this three-country itinerary combines elegant Zurich with quirky Vaduz and gorgeous Munich for the ultimate city break trip through Central Europe. If you're a Before Trilogy superfan, then this itinerary is for you. Trace the footsteps of the most iconic travel couple in cinematic history, Jesse and Celine, in this three-country tour that includes stops in Vienna, Paris, and the Peloponnese. This ambitious itinerary is only recommended for the most rabid of Before fans, but if that's you, I promise you'll love this trip. I hope that video was helpful for your travel planning. Thanks so much for watching, and if you want more practical tips for traveling Europe, be sure to like and subscribe. See you next week. Bye!